Boo. Did I get ya? It's alright, you can leave a warning down in the comments so other people don't fall victim to this nasty jump scare. You know, a lot of people think that math is scary all of the time, and it certainly can be intimidating, but if you put in the necessary work, practice, and study, I think you'll find that it's often much more exciting than it is intimidating. But today, we've got a topic that is downright spooky. Downright bone chilling. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't blame you if you clicked away now. I mean, I probably wouldn't watch on. It's pretty scary stuff. So you can click away now and the rest of us will just brave the horrors without you. You can go watch the newest PewDiePie video or something. I won't blame you if you do. But for those that are brave enough to carry on, I am Shawnee, and I will be your host through tonight's House of Horrors as we take a look at something extraordinarily frightening. The Vampire Number. So let's get into it. This here, 1260, is the first vampire number, and if this doesn't freak you out, I don't know what will. This down here is a very special product. 21 times 60 is equal to 1260. And notice that all of the digits in these factors make up the digits in their product, 1260. 1260 is a vampire number, and 21 and 60 are its fangs. And yes, that is the real term for them. They are called fangs. I know, this is relentlessly terrifying stuff. Let me erase that before we get flagged. So what really makes a number a vampire number? Let's go over the important properties. In order for a number to be a vampire number, first, it needs to have an even number of digits. So in this case, 1260 has four digits. Four is even, so that's all good. Secondly, the number has to be equal to the product of two numbers that both have half as many digits as the original number. In this case, 21 and 60 both have two digits, and two is half of four, so this is good also. The third property that must be in place is that of these two numbers that multiply to 1260, there can be no more than one of them that ends in zero. So in this case, 60 ends in zero and 21 doesn't. That's okay. It's all right if one of the fangs ends in zero. They just can't both end in zero. And the fourth and final property that must be in place, which is perhaps the spookiest of all, is that these numbers that multiply to 1260, the digits that make them up have to be the same digits that make up their product. You can see here, all of the same digits are used in 1260, as well as in this factorization of 1260. So 1260 has all the necessary properties of a vampire number. Let's go through them one more time. A vampire number has an even number of digits. One, two, three, four, four is even, looks good. A vampire number has to be equal to the product of two numbers that both have half as many digits as the original number. Both of these numbers have two digits. Two is half of four, so that looks good. Of these two numbers that multiply to 1260, only one is allowed to end in zero. And in this case, we see that one ends in zero and one doesn't, so that's good too. And then finally, every single digit in 1260 must be represented in the product. We see that one appears, two appears, six appears, and so does zero. And if, for example, you had three sixes in a number, then you would also need three sixes in its factorization. So the number of times the digit appears is also important. So we see 1260 fits all of the properties of vampire numbers. 1260 is a vampire number. It's the first vampire number, and these are its fangs. Very sharp, very menacing. Something else that is extraordinarily spooky is that vampire numbers can have more than a single pair of fangs. And here's an example. 13,078,260. If this isn't the scariest eight-digit number you've ever seen, then I don't know what is. This number is equal to 1,620 times 8,073. It's equal to 1,863 
times 7,020, and it's equal to 2,070 times 6,318. That's one, two, three horrifying pairs of fangs on this vampire number. And let's quickly see how every digit in the original number is represented in its fangs. Seven is right over there. Eight is right there. Two, that's right over here. Six is over here. And now notice we have a second zero, and the second zero is also represented in the fangs. And notice that in each pair of fangs, only one number ends in a zero. If none of them end in a zero, that's all right. If one of them ends in a zero, that's all right. But if both numbers end in a zero, those are not fangs. If we did consider those fangs, that would make things a lot more boring. Here's a demonstration why. 1260 is a vampire number, so if our fangs can both end in zero, then here is another vampire number. 126,000, with fangs 210 and 600. Also, here is another vampire number. And another one. 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 And you know what this not vampire number makes me think of? Let me just move it over a little bit and adjust the size of my eraser and erase these first three digits in the number and write a P and an S. Spooky. I think this was pretty darn spooky. And we could look at more vampire numbers, but I think I've had my fun for now. But that's what vampire numbers are. So if you want to freak yourself out even more, you can try to find some more vampire numbers. Of course, look them up if you're interested. There are a number of sources on vampire numbers. I want to thank my friend Daniel for giving me the idea of doing a lesson on vampire numbers. And I want to thank all of you for watching and supporting Wrath of Math. So please let me know in the comments if you have any video requests, any lessons that you would like to see on the channel. There are links in the description so you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that cool stuff if that interests you. And you can support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month if that is something you are interested in. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand what vampire numbers are. Have a very happy Halloween and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.